to the Carry Config Podcast. My name is Brandon. And this is Ron. And here we talk about everyday carry gear, loadouts, configurations, and updates in the world of EDC. How's it going, man? Dude, I'm just hanging out. Just got some coffee. Yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you so, go? Where'd you get your coffee? Java Joe's. Java, Java Joe's. Joe's. I mean, I think we have like three or four locations here in Utah. Okay. And it's just local. So, All I right. mean, I, nice. I got a frozen chai. Which is probably not good for me, but I was just like, you know what? I need this. Frozen chai. That's a little on the sweet side, I think. I love sweet things, bro. Bro, I'm surprised you haven't gotten on like the black coffee tip yet. Like I was like, you know, I'm I'm sure you're like, you know, wellness, fitness minded. And so I think I made a choice when I was getting into coffee a a few years ago. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go cold turkey, just black coffee, no sugar, no hazelnut sweetener, any of that good stuff. Yeah, I know. It sounds great, but... Yeah, how many pounds of taste, sugar have you saved? Yeah, it's true. Dude, it's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I'm trying to cut sugar out completely. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's been really difficult. So, mm-hmm. like you know, Coke products and stuff like that. I've been like really simmering that down quite yeah. a bit. In moderation, but, dude. No. Just go little yeah, by little, exactly. and you'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah, nice for sure. man. Any uh, pocket uh, check updates since we last spoke? I think it's been a few weeks, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. So, <sighs> April pocket dump. This is already yeah. should be live on my channel, but I've got this really cool data crew. What a slider with a bunch of gear in it. So I'm not going to go over all this stuff. Just go check out the video on my check channel. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of my primary carry, I really wanted to cover that. And this is the ProTech Malibu oh, yes. operator. The edition. operator. All Ooh. black. Yep. All the black. Grail, baby. Ah. Reverse Tonto blade tritium inlay and then just zero branding all around just ultra minimalistic knife i just love this thing very cool very cool would you would you recommend that for a knife user of i guess all levels or would you recommend that for a specific point once you've you know kind of gotten familiar with your blade steels and your handles and stuff like that so the malibu is just that knife that i can just suggest to absolutely everyone you don't necessarily need to go for the operator edition because this thing is pretty expensive and hard to get um Usually people ask me like, "Hey, uh, what's a good knife around two hundred dollars?" And I'll usually say, "Just grab a Malibu. They're nice. they're amazing." I mean, you've you've handled this one specifically, I think, yeah. down at Blade yeah. Texas. But yeah, I've been yeah. I mean, you don't need too. to know a ton, <laughs> right? Exactly. And in terms of the knife build quality, um, if you're used to American made knives like Benchmade, mm. this is going to be a really good alternative. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Protect they're based out of like Southern California, I believe. Just hopping to skip from where I'm from. Yep. Yep. So, exactly. I mean, so they're real close to you, man. Yeah. <laughs> when you I've get been, to I've visit been them, to visit. it's crazy. I know. No, I know. I've been waiting to visit them. So it's, it's going to be a good time. They're going to be mm-hmm. at Blade Show Atlanta, I believe. So, you know, it's only a month and a half away. Can you believe that? Dude, Blade Atlanta is going to be crazy. Like, uh, <laughs> would they just released the floor plan on that? And it's like four times the size of Texas, <sighs> which is Texas is like maybe a third bigger than the one here out West. Oh man. So, I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of walking. Yeah. A ton of walking and a ton of filming. For all you viewers and listeners out there, if you haven't watched our Blade Show coverage, we both ran the show vlog style, interviewed a ton of people, walked the show. Uh, If you haven't seen that coverage, definitely check out our respective YouTube channels, Ron Kwok and, of course, Everyday Minimalist. And, you know, just seeing the work that we put into that, just filming all day, talking to people and then editing at night. It's going to be oh, a bro, madhouse it in Atlanta. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> live streaming, our yes. makeshift live streaming setup. I think we talked about it in the last pod, but this one, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy because I'll, I'll have two cameras. Oh, have yeah. Three angles going. Well, we'll talk about we'll camera about gear we'll later in this episode for <laughs> yeah. sure. For sure. But I'm cool. stoked, man. I, I think we're going to mess with the schedule a little bit in terms of uh, Blade Show Atlanta and how we're going to run it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we're going to do like back to back to back editing just because it was insane like i think between the three of uh, between the two of us we got like i don't know uh 12 hours of sleep the whole week yeah literally (laughs) literally i mean there was nights where i was up until or mornings i was up until 7 a.m so i was just like dude this is overwhelming gotta chill came back and took like an entire week off yeah because it was just too much i mean i'd rather just segment it you know film all day and then chill i guess just hang out with people and like really just enjoy it and then when I get back, I can just kind of segment it. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, like, I don't know if that's your plan, but that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a great plan. And I think it's, it's interesting because as content creators, we're 
both the makers and the consumers to a certain degree of yeah, our content. Exactly. So when we're going to Blade Show, yeah, you know, we're going for work because we're filming and covering the show. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, I feel like it's important for us to kind of soak it in, hang out with the community and just have mm-hmm. casual banter with knife makers and kind of just get benefit from that angle too, right? 110%. Yeah, exactly. And then we we as um, creators need to network as well. Mm. So that way we can bring new stuff in terms of gear and stuff like that to, to you guys as the audience. That's really important to me at, at least. I'm That's sure true. it is for you too, right? Oh, yeah. Can't let the content get so, stale. You know what I mean? I gotta exactly. We got to bring new stuff. Yeah. Right, right. For sure, for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, bringing it back to Everyday Carry and your updates, uh, for me, those are dope updates, by the way, like Operator Malibu, mm. definitely an awesome carry no matter what season, no matter what time of year you're in. Yeah. Uh, for me, I just came back from a trip to Southern California, celebrated my little one's uh, second birthday, so she's growing super fast. But for yes. me, the clutch carry for me oh, has been the Air Ghostling 2. So, you know, it's not a knife, it's not a wallet, but everything goes in here and it's been super essential for me, especially since it's getting a little warmer and I'm wearing gym shorts, not a lot of pocket uh, volume available there. So everything goes in here and I can ensure that I don't drop anything or lose anything. Uh, fun little side story. A few months ago, I went to watch a movie and I was, you know, I was wearing my, my shorts and just watching the theaters in one of those theaters that had a recliner. And by the mm-hmm. end of the show, you know, it was an awesome movie, walked out, walked all the way to the garage and realized I couldn't get into my car because I had dropped my car fob. And so, you know, after going back and searching row after row, busting out my trusty i3T flashlight from Olight, just it's like coming searching. on clutch. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's Gotta a practical use, use. It's a practical <laughs> exactly. use. You know what I mean? All these people saying like, I don't care torches. I don't carry flashlights. Yeah, I'm not going hunting. But at the same time, you know, little inconveniences here and there, it really helps. But long story short, 20 Mm -hmm. minutes later, I found the keys. They had slipped out of my pockets and I was like, never again am I going to a theater without one of these. And I have it. Yeah, because you can just leave it all in one place and it's going to be on your person. And it's zipped up, secure. There's plenty of organization in there, especially for a 0.7 liter volume sling. It's tiny, but it's very suitable for your daily schedules. Dude, yeah, you were rocking that the entire time at Blade Texas and I was really digging it. And then on top of that, air... The, the sling bag too, I think is the one that you sent out to me for mm-hmm. my birthday. Happy that birthday, thing is bro. built really, really well. Yeah. Like really well. Um, did you guys need to check out air stuff? I mean, go to, over to Ron's channel if you want to see more about that brand specifically, but I definitely think you guys should yeah. take a look into it at least. For sure. For sure. I mean, I've covered air in a few times uh, in the videos on my channel and I have a comparison video slated for the near future where I compare the city pack and the city pack pro. So if you're looking out of slings and into a little more comprehensive loadout, like a full on tech backpack, be on the lookout for that video. But Most definitely. Yeah, man. I mean, speaking of air, I mean, one of the, the big things I've noticed about that company is that they constantly innovate and they're using new materials and new designs to kind of get the carry aspect of your daily life just in order and super easy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one thing I noticed that uh, is really happening these days is innovation in everyday carry, you know, especially with oh, knives. Yeah. You know, once you have a certain design, you kind of just stick with it because it's a classic. Don't break what's not broken. Right. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, but I mean, like yeah. uh, in, in terms of innovation, we should we should go on to the next thing that we're going to be talking about in terms of knives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah so yeah. this is the new kickstop from Ooh. Chavez. Riyadh made. Ron has one with him. Yeah. And uh, this this is the Chavez 229 rend- rendition. Yes. Is that how you say it? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not of uh, Spanish heritage, so I don't. I mean, know I say I'm rendition well. usually just to keep it easy, but this is a is a n- massive knife. Yeah. Six and a half ounces is its total weight. Titanium mm. scales, titanium frame lock, M390 blade, crazy skull clip, as you may know if you know Chavez knives. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is a new design with uh, in collaboration with Lee Williams and his Kickstop mechanism so basically what happens is the flipper tab completely disappears when you go to deploy it so i mean it, you guys are gonna have to look it up online if you're listening to this but it's a pretty sweet one we're starting to see these newer locking mechanisms kind of come to fruition it doesn't happen very often like the last one was the demco shark lock mm. on the 8020 8020.5 that was kind of like a light switch trigger mechanism this one is just a little bit more interesting in my opinion just because right. it completely kills the the flipper tab. 
What are it's your clean. thoughts on it, dude? I think it's really clean, especially on a beefier knife like this. Because, I, I mean, I haven't owned a Chavez knife yet. This is the first time I'm actually handling one uh, to any degree, you know, in the studio. I think I played around with a few of yours when I was at your studio. But nice. just to have this in hand, it's it's a massive knife in terms of the other knives that I've handled. But to have that flipper tab kind of delete and go into a streamlined finish when the knife is deployed, mm -hmm. I think it just it's a nice touch and it really kind of makes it more subtle when it's deployed because look at this thing it's it's a beefy it's boy. so interesting as well yeah. like when i first got the knife the first thing i had to do i was like i, I gotta take this thing apart to see how the kick stop is implemented oh. in the 229 That's wild. and uh, with me being a tinkerer um just seeing the mechanism inside is like it's crazy it's like yeah. two pieces in one but plus another piece like I'll have, have to, to crack it open myself. Yeah, you like, got to crack it open, dude. I get it. You want to re reverse engineer it and kind of see how they did it, how they were able mm -hmm. to make that mechanism work so flawlessly. And it, it's just one of those little attention to detail, you know, quality of life improvements that really changes yeah. and transforms the end product of the knife after it's right. implemented, you know, especially when it's implemented Absolutely. well like this. Dude, super 100% on top. Yeah, yeah. We both got ours at House of Blades. I believe you have a code. Yeah, or that's right. That's right. So yeah. House of Blades, if you didn't know, they sponsored my trip out to Blade Show, Texas, and it was an amazing time. Thank you, House of Blades, Chris, Susie. You guys are amazing. So they sent this out to me to preview before it releases to the general public. If you want to learn more, check out the links below. We'll have everything linked below, including where you can find this podcast, all the other gear that we're going to be talking about. It'll be linked below, and you can use code PURPOSE to save 10% on your order through House of Blades if you want to pull the trigger on this this one i mean it's only a matter of time because this thing is it's super juicy <laughs> it's so good dude you gotta keep it i know <clears throat> i'm just pressure. saying you gotta the keep pressure. it but, but no pressure i mean for we got sure. blade coming up there's a lot of stuff <laughs> absolutely and i still you have my eye is. for that operator malibu so we'll have to see Ugh. Ugh. Yep, yep. stop tempting me dope. man <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of knives i feel like you have a pair that you need to show us right oh, now oh man too, right? okay yeah so these are very very special knives and they are coming from benchmade so these are the new gold class facts and if you guys don't know what the fact is it's basically benchmade's iteration of the stiletto or the I guess the classic Italian stiletto, but just mm. super updated. So the first one is going to be this one that has this crazy uh, Chad Nichols Damascus blade along with this sapphire blue PVD coated hardware, thumb stud pivot. Um, liners are really interesting. These are just barely coming out. So they, they should be announced April 27th, which should be after this or yeah. no, no, sorry, before, before this, this by the time you hear this podcast, it will already be on the shelves and it's a limited run. Too, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be 200 of each variant. There's this really cool black one that has the gold accents and then a black PVD coated blade. I think it's PVD. Don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's brand new. Sure. Um, and this one is Dama steel. Mm -hmm. So there's just two different versions. Personally, I think I like this blue one a little bit more. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah, I mean, it matches the channel aesthetics just a tad. I know you, you like to use contrasting colors, especially the blue in your text, yeah. in your titles. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing exactly. for the viewers and listeners that don't know, what's the difference between uh, Damascus and Damasteel? I heard you say it earlier, and it sounds sure. like it's the same thing, but could you elaborate? Yeah, okay. So when we're talking about Damascus and Damasteel, Damasteel is pretty much the same thing as Damascus. It's just a subsidiary brand of what it is. So like, for example, you'll have like CPM S30V, CPM S45VN, or MagnaCut. Um, Damasteel is just a version of Damascus mm -hmm. that's branded to Damasteel. Got it. So Damasteel is the, the brand and it. Damascus is the type of blade steel. Yeah, that's yeah. Like this one on, on the uh, more special fact with the blue sapphire hardware this mm -hmm. one has chad nichols um damascus mm -hmm. so i mean same same thing yeah it's just branded differently got it and i'm sure they have their own unique way of manufacturing yeah. it giving it yeah okay for sure exactly nice thank you for elaborating and letting us know of course man well i mean after going through all these different knives there's so many different like styles for different people 
I want to kind of dial it back a little bit and talk about purpose. You know what I mean? Like, I feel sure. like the two of us recently, we've become full time creators and it's a wild experience. And we can't we kind of are doing some sort of the same thing. But I feel like mm-hmm. we've taken two drastically different journeys to get here to cover everyday carry as we know it. So oh, tell absolutely. us a little bit more about, you know, how your purpose has been shaped with your journey and how you kind of tailor your gear for your purpose. So when it comes down to my journey and my path, I actually started off with knives, basically in the whole EDC niche. Um, I got my first bench made and then kind of scaled from like the budget range and then started moving up in the tiers. I think that's where we're a little bit different Mm -hmm. because you're just barely starting out now. I started back three years ago and really got into, I guess, like the nitty gritty of like the mid grade stuff before I even went into the higher class stuff. Mm. Um, so when I say higher class, it would be more so production knives or high end mid tech knives. And then yeah. you get into like the customs custom knives are not within my budget. You know, we're talking a thousand to 3000, $5,000. Mm. That is way too much money for me personally. Like I featured it on my channel before, but I don't yeah. actually own those. Those are usually just loners. It's intense. Um, man. and, now I'm trying to diversify, right? Get into like EDC pouches. That's been a huge segment that a lot of you listeners are enjoying, um, as well as like backpacks, slings, stuff like that. So we're, we're kind of opposite. Yeah, I was going to say, we took like yeah. the opposite roads because I started, mm-hmm. you know, just with my EDC, what I had around, like my wallets, my key organizer, stuff like that. And then from there, I went into backpacks, like headlong into slings, mm-hmm. into backpacks, into wearables. And then uh, I did that at length, covered different types of bags, different types of loadouts of sizes, depending on what your use cases are. And then recently, I, w- I feel like in the last six months, that's when I really got into knives, especially since, you know, we met, started talking and you kind of served or volunteered rather as sort of my guide to knives at large because i mean you have over 200 plus knives in your collection and oh like, yeah visited, for sure dude, it was it was dude, like visiting an strengths. encyclopedia yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure if i came to your studio you'd have just have bags on bags everywhere which yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah probably yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, i mean we we have different strengths within edc which i think that's what makes our collaborative efforts really good because it's like hey we've got different perspectives i am a new i guess sling slash backpack user in that sense. And then yeah. you're a new knife user. So we can kind of just go off each other with that. Yeah. Kind of get like a Sherpa. On <laughs> the way through. We're Sherpaing yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah, we're Sherpaing each other. Yeah. Uh, yep. Hopefully that, that doesn't sound too inappropriate. Anyways. Oh, nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's awesome. And I feel like, you know, the culmination of our journeys has led us to become full-time content creators. And with that, I feel like, I feel like photography gear and camera gear has really been a hot issue. Like, in Mm -hmm. our community, in our circles as of late, just because like, you know, as a creator, a lot of people are trying to understand, you know, how did we start? What kind of gear and equipment, what kind of workflow did we adopt when we first went into it? So tell me more about like what you're rolling with right now in terms of gear for cameras. Yeah. So right now I've got a Canon R6. I'm a Canon shooter. Mm -hmm. So I love Canon. We can blame Peter McKinnon on that. (laughs) Um, And basically with um, the cameras that I've gone through, I started off with like Sony, went to like the Sony A5000, super basic, recorded on OBS type of camera, Mm -hmm. then moved up to like the Canon RP, the, yeah, the RP and then the R6, the one yeah. I'm using now. And a matter of fact, I think this week I'm going to be picking up a second camera so we can have a B cam Ooh. and that's going to be pretty exciting. That's exciting, yeah. man. And of course, lighting and all that stuff. But if you, if people are just start like trying to start out on YouTube, just mm-hmm. know that the camera that you have on you or on your person or wherever, that's going to be the best camera for you. Like you don't need to invest thousands of dollars in a camera gear until you have like your storytelling skills down, your editing skills, all that stuff. That's going to be way more valuable to you than a piece of gear because at the end of everything, it's it's just a tool. For so sure. Know For how to sure. use the tool. I mean, whenever <laughs> anyone, uh, yeah, exactly. Like part of it is purchasing the tool and figuring out what tool is right for you. But the other half of it, I would say even the more important part is learning how to use that tool, Mm -hmm. how to maintain that tool and how to kind of incorporate into a daily routine well. So whenever a new creator comes up to me and says, hey, like, how do I get started? What kind of camera should I buy? I tell them you got a smartphone, right? If you do, there you go. Yep. Start hit that record button and start iterating, start working on your personality, start iterating on what you want to talk about. 
Cause like you don't mm-hmm. even know, like maybe you like everyday carry, but as soon as you start talking about it, you're like, man, this is boring as hell. Like I want to do something right. else. I want to, <laughs> I want to travel. I want to talk about snowboarding or something. And so yeah, and definitely dictate. get into a subject that you love, because yeah. if you don't love that thing, you're probably not going to be motivated to make content on it. And that's when channels kind of die down. So yeah. like explore your, your horizons, find the thing that you're very passionate about because it will show like I'm super passionate about knives. I yeah. love knives. So I like to portray like, like, Hey, this is the cool knife. This is not the knife that you want. So yeah, yeah, that's super important. Yep. Yep. And I feel like if you don't kind of, if you don't take that first step, you're kind of like, eh, I'll find my passion along the way. It, it's part of the journey. You will kind of learn more about what you're trying to do as you do it. But I feel like if you don't take that time to really think about it, you're going to, you're going to stop doing it when the trends start happening or stop happening exactly. for it. You know what I mean? Yep. Cause it's going to die down and then you're going to be like, well, what am I going to do now? And only those who are truly passionate about what they're doing will then pioneer the next step, guide the next direction. You know, right. when you see that flashy transition or you see these snappy speed ramp reels and stuff like that, you know, Ooh. if you're, if you're not passionate about it, right, you're just going to be copying yep. someone else doing it. When you see it on Instagram, you're not going to be innovating yourself. So hit that record Absolutely. button, iterate, get better at what you do. Lighting and audio are very important, you know? Very, very oh. important. <laughs> yeah. you know, fun fact, we this is our second go at this podcast because this this specific yeah. episode because the audio wasn't there. You know, it was like a technical issue that we kind of jumbled on. <laughs> but I mean, case in point though, right? Yeah. Like you don't sacrifice on quality. I don't sacrifice on quality. Exactly. And here, you know, we have the visual, but if the audio is not good, this is a podcast. It's an audio yeah. thing, right? Yeah, it has to be good. I mean, uh, with Ron and I, we share that in our creative spaces, basically to make the best possible content that Mm -hmm. you can possibly produce. And uh, that's that's one thing that I was like, I need to collaborate with you is just because of the raw quality. Because remember the first like the message back April of last year, so a year ago. Hey, shouts to Matt Martinez for hooking us up. Yeah, shouts to Matt. (laughs) You made this happen, bro. (laughs) Yep, exactly. And it was just like, dude, this guy has some really good crispy content. This is why I want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, normally other people would be like, yo, just put me in your video. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, this guy has earned it <laughs> instead. Dude, it's wild, so. man. Like, I, th- I think, like, it, it really is just, like, circumstance and just right. working on your own craft and uh, and everything else will follow. You know what I mean? You, as soon as you Absolutely. get better at what you do, you'll know what kind of gear you need. You'll know what kind mm-hmm. of direction you need to take to realize that vision. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. When you're trying to be a YouTuber or, or create content for the first time, like I think it's the absolutely wrong approach to kind of DM all the big creators and be like, hey, can you feature me? Hey, can you like, yeah, don't do that. Definitely that? don't do that. <laughs> first of all, it's cringy, right? Like, damn. Yeah. And then secondly, it's like, it's not that the creators don't want to help you. It's just that, you know, you need to really answer that question for yourself and figure out, you know, like what it is that you want to do before you can even apply the tips and advice that's given to you in order right. to create this content, you know? So exactly. It's, it's I'm crazy. with you on that one, dude, for sure. Yeah. 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 Cool. But I mean, this is just, I, I like that this podcast has become like a forum, like especially later on when we have more episodes out, like if you guys have any suggestions, we have an entire discord. I have the purpose crew discord. Brandon has the EDM club discord. We'll leave links yep. to, in, to join those discords down below, but we'll have areas where you can just drop your suggestions. If you have ideas, for things you want to hear, things you want to uh, see us elaborate on in Carry Config. If you want to talk to the community as well, I mean, there's there's a huge community there where you guys can just, you know, hash it up <laughs> if you want yeah. to do. Yeah, Learn exactly. new things. If you're, if you're trying to buy, sell stuff, check out each of our discords. It's mm-hmm. a really good place for and source. For sure. And it's like a tight knit community. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I feel like we all share a common interest. And for the most part, you know, like haters or people who are just trying, you know, they have ulterior motives and stuff. They'll, they'll show up from time to time. But I feel mm-hmm. like in the long run, they're just going to kind of fall by the wayside. And all that's left is that, you know, cozy, very cool community that supports one another and just want to take this shared passion of EDC like forward. Exactly. Yeah. We'll leave links in everything in terms of where you can find this podcast. I think right now we have it on Spotify, Apple, and uh, Google as well, Google. wherever mm-hmm. you find your podcast. We'll leave links to everything down below. And you can always see this video podcast 
on our respective YouTube channels. I think episode one has been uploaded to Everyday Minimalist channel. Episode yep. two will be on my channel and we're going to go back and forth on that, but also have playlists of the complete collection online for either for uh, all of you on either of our channels. So it's going to be a good time, man. Dude, it's going to be amazing. And this is only episode two. I mean, moving forward, we plan to do this, I guess, indefinitely at this point, right? There's Dude, no cap. Episode 100? <laughs> episode 100? What are you thinking yeah, about the, that? The, <laughs> it'll get to the point where this is super cozy and we can just make it like super chill for you guys to listen yeah. in or watch or do whatever. I mean, that's the goal originally. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Oh, oh, one thing we out. did was we oh, released yeah. episode one and we did it premiere style. So we were sitting in the mm-hmm. live chat on YouTube, kind of bouncing ideas off of you guys and seeing your live reactions. And I wanted to know if you were down to do like a live kind of almost like a live stream directly afterwards so we can do you know instant reactions from the two of us but also get feedback from the community as we go yeah i think think that would be super fun yeah i mean uh, regardless are are we are we doing like a duo live or i mean i think we should let the viewers chime in a little bit yeah. in the discord or dm us let us know if that's true you want to see us doing it like that yeah yeah we'll be on instagram config on instagram Exactly, exactly. And both of us have access to that. So if you have any dying questions for me or Brandon, you can go ahead and drop it in there and we'll get to you as soon as we can. And of course, if you drop a dope idea, a banger of an idea, we might incorporate it in there and chat you out. Shout outs. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> for sure. Well, what are you working we on this week? I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like we have a lot of editing to do, a lot of filming to do on our slate this week and the weeks to come. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the weeks to come. Holy shit. That's Dude. that's another story for another time. Yeah. When I can disclose that, I will disclose it. But you hear that, guys? Yeah. Exclusive uh, plot leaks coming real soon. You might find. Oh some- my god! <laughs> yeah, the biggest project of my life ever. Yeah. If it goes through, I don't want to jinx it. Knock them wood. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. All you need to know, listener and or viewer, is that we've got some awesome stuff planned for you guys. Um, I think we have some REs in the pipeline. We do. We've got yeah. some exclusive content. Um, I know that all, both of our member communities are flourishing right now, so I know we're giving early access to our videos. We're doing exclusive members-only live streams whenever it's possible, and yep. so, I mean, it, there's, there's so much good stuff, honestly. Dude, this content is going to go up the wall. Um, yeah. This next, like, uh, I don't even know how long. I just want to make sure that we both don't get burnt out. You know, like that creator burnout. Have you experienced creator burnout? Let's let's touch yes. up on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so. uh, absolutely. So fun fact, when I started YouTube in 2019, I went for a week, what, consistently week after week posting videos until February. And then I stopped until July. So I actually Whoa. didn't do anything till, yeah, I didn't do anything for February until July of 2020. And then I picked it up Damn. again because it was like, Five it was break. cool. You know, it's like that infatuation phase when you like, you find out you, you want to do something and you're really into it and then you go, di- you dive deep into it and then you realize, oh crap, like I'm in neck deep water and I'm not ready for this. <laughs> you're like, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. I need to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. like it was a reality check for me when I first started and I was like, okay, I need to like kind of reconsolidate and figure out a game plan. And so, yeah, I burned out right at the very beginning and then That's I came crazy. back in July. Yeah, it's nuts. How about you, man? I burned out a year and a half in so it, it was pretty gnarly. It had some effects on like my personal life and stuff like that. We won't get into mm-hmm. it, but um, yeah, I was pushing super, super hard, like extremely hard to the point where I was, you know, full-time job. And then I came home and I was full-time YouTube mm-hmm. and then sleep. I mean, that's yeah. pretty much what it was like eat, sleep, YouTube. Sometimes sleep again, not even sleep, whatever. dude. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes not even sleep. Cause I would stay up until like three to 4am just editing. Um, mm-hmm. and the thing is when I was in the learning process, I had to film, edit, make the thumbnail and post the same day, same night. Mm. So I don't know if you ever did that, but like did everything in like a solid six hour chunk. And I used to yeah. do that and it, it was, it was horrible, man. That's when I got burnt out it's and I was rough. just like, I'm, I'm done. So I took a three week break. Yeah. I think it was three week break. And then I came back to it and I was like, okay, let's reset everything. Let's rebalance all of it. Make sure yeah. that everything is just okay. <laughs> Instead yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, work all the way up here. Personal life is down to the floor. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get why you did that just because like, you know, as a creator, you kind of just, you know, that you're only going to get as far as you're willing to push. And so, you know, there's, there's no, you know, I'm going to check out at 40 hours and go home to my paycheck. There's none of that. Right. It's Mm -hmm. like you get 
you get out what you put in. So, and I mean, obviously it worked. You're at 500,000 subscribers plus right now. Crazy. Congratulations on that. That's well, thanks amazing. on that. And then now it's time to like just ramp it down a little bit if I can, <laughs> possibly. I'm just like, let me slow it down a little bit. It's too late, and, bro. You're on this trajectory. Yeah, it's a little you're, too late. I mean, up. <laughs> yeah, we're just more and more work. But no, like for real, I just, I just want to like moving forward. I just want to make sure that everything is a little bit more balanced and there's no creator burnout. You know, mm -hmm. creators should feel open to being able to take a break and not not Absolutely. feel the re repercussions and live to the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I've seen a lot of bigger YouTubers just be like, Oh dude, I'm burnt out. I'm just going to go on hiatus for six months or whatever. I'm just like, man, you guys need to not go too hard. Just like give yourself some breathing space in order to keep doing it. So, yep. yep. I mean, it goes back to passion, right? Like this is a long-term game. You're not going to be able yeah. to like capitalize on a trend and shoot to a million in a day. Like there are, I mean, it could happen, but those are those really rare unicorns and you can't really bank on that. You can't just say, okay. And then the channel will usually explode yeah. afterwards. Like they're, they're going to get their limelight and then just. So. Oh yeah. And yeah, not explode. They're going to implode. Like it's not implode, a good thing. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, exactly. the worst. Yeah. So yeah. It's better to kind of go in for the long haul, focus on a topic that you actually like day in, day out. And it's all like, it's crazy how everything kind of ties back to life, right? Like when you're creating mm -hmm. a new habit, a new productivity habit or something like that, going to the gym, you know, you want to go weekly or, or three or four right. times a week. You can't just say, all right, I'm ready to get jacked. Let's go work out twice <laughs> yeah. a day, every day and I'll, and I'll get there. No, yeah. like, you, you know, you have to pace yourself. You have to ease yourself into it. And, you know, if you don't commit to the long term and kind of pace yourself, it's one I have two of things Two one of two things will happen. Either you'll burn out or you'll be one of those unicorns. But it's very rare that that second case ever happens. Burnout is a big deal for me personally. Mm. I, I'm sure it is for you as well. We got yeah. we just got to balance everything. I mean, that's yeah, just how I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, I got a family into it. at this point, you know, yeah, like, exactly. You have daughter, an entire family to attend to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so but. it's just about balance. And I think I think that's going to be the way forward to kind of pro keep producing all of this high quality everyday carry content for you guys. You know, just day mm -hmm. in, day out, being balanced, focusing on new topics, making those connections, bouncing ideas off of each other. Keep going. Yeah, sure. Do. Cool. I think that pretty much wraps it up for this episode, guys. Sure does. Um, if you didn't hear earlier, we can be found on all types of platforms. Right now, we're on Spotify, Apple, Google. You can also catch the video podcast of this here episode on YouTube on either of our channels. Links and everything like that will be down below. If you're looking for gear, Hustle Blades is a great place to do it. Again, code Purpose. Or there's also code EDM if you want to save 10% off your order over at House of Blades. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Ron. I'm Brandon. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>